Hello, my name is Brian and welcome to the Win 911 instructional video series. In this video, I'll be discussing advanced tactics and strategies. It's only available on the advanced license of the software. How do you find your license? Inside of Win 911, you can go to the System and Information tab. Here you can see I'm using the advanced license. A prerequisite for this video, you should be familiar with configuring your contacts, schedules, and roles and you should understand your basic tactics and strategies. I have additional how-to instructional videos on our website for those items. Using the advanced license of our software, the advantage is the visual flow chart or state machine type configuration and the ability to advance callout escalation. What do I need to get started? First of all, you should know all of your alarms of interest and who you wish to notify. This could include your technicians, engineers, managers, or maybe your on-call person. When do you contact these people? Do you have a night shift, a day shift, afternoons, weekends, holidays? Inside of Win 911, we have four different notification types, your email, SMS, voice, and mobile. The last step of the process, using all these questions above, you can define your escalation paths. For example, if you notify your technician of an alarm and they're not responding, do you contact the engineer or do you just call the technician again? Let's take a look at your advanced tactics and strategies. Still, the same process is in place. Your alarm triggers a strategy, which triggers a tactic. Your strategy is the policy of actions to put in place. In this example, the initial event happens and it starts a tactic called assembly operators. If any alarm state changes, we will re-notify all those users. You can turn this feature on and off. But for here, if the alarm goes from active to inactive or active to acknowledged, we will re-notify the people who have been contacted. Using advanced strategies, you have the option to define what happens upon a timer if you choose to use. In this example here, upon a repeating timer of every 20 minutes, we will start a tactic called Notify All. This Notify All tactic would contact all the people in your phone book, whether it's your email, phone, SMS, or your mobile app. The last step in the process here in this strategy is as the alarm becomes terminal, you'll stop that callout list. Now what does this callout list look like? As you can see here, it's a visual flow chart. You have some advanced escalation. Now, as the alarm comes in, we can make a decision on notifying all the engineers, notifying all the managers. Then we can check to see, is it a certain time of day? Here, we check to see, is it day shift? Yes, go this way. No, go this way. Is this afternoon shift? Yes, go to the right. If not, go to the left. If it's not, we'll contact those on-call people. Say, for example, it's the weekend. In the previous example, I just showed you how to configure a call based on time of days and uh, notifying a group. You also have the option to make more advanced decision blocks. You have your label, severity, or time span decisions. In this example over here, we're making a decision based on safety, and then if it's, not, if it's a safety, we will contact the managers. I won't discuss everything on this slide, so if you'd like to have more information, please pause here before proceeding. Let's take a look at an example I've created for our demo. I recommend taking a screenshot before we get started. The first step in the process, you know exactly which alarms you'd like to notify on. Here, we're choosing alarms with safety. As our alarms come in, we will assign these with a safety label. This could be something like a high pressure alarm or a palletizer fault or a light curtain. These alarms, they'll have the safety label and we'll notify Brian with the mobile app. If there's no response after 15 minutes, we can escalate the issue. Here's the escalation. Brian comes into the mobile app. We'll try three times. No response. We'll notify Jill, the manager. We can repeat this process every 45 minutes if the alarm is left unacknowledged. So there's two steps in the process. You'll define your tactic or your call list of people, and you will define your strategy, those policies of actions to put in place. We will name it engineers. We will make a decision if this is a safety label, then yes, we will not delay and we'll notify Brian, retry, and call Jill. If it's not a safety label, 
we can just go ahead and contact our technician. We can wait 15 minutes and eventually contact the on-call person. For this tactic to work, we need a strategy. We will also create a strategy named engineers. So engineer strategy, engineer tactic. You can name these whatever you choose, whatever makes sense to you. I personally like to name them the same thing so you can have clarity from end to end. This strategy will start the tactic. The stop condition will be defined as the alarm is acknowledged. Upon a repeating timer, every 45 minutes, we will re-notify those people who have been contacted. Next, I'll be jumping into a configuration of the advanced tactic and strategy, but I'd like you to know that I have my mobile and my phone users configured prior to this demo. Okay, we are inside of Win911 under the notification tactics advanced. I've named this tactic engineers. Once the tactic is started, we can check for a safety label. In the next series of videos for subscription filters, I'll talk about how you can assign your safety labels. For now, let's just assume the alarm has a safety label. If it does have a safety label, we will notify Brian with the mobile app. Wait 15 minutes and repeat this loop three times. After three mobile notifications, the alarm is still unacknowledged. We escalate the issue to Jill for her phone call. If it does not contain a safety label, we go to the left. We then notify all the technicians, wait 15 minutes, and then notify the on-call people. As you can see, there's a difference between this block and this block. This is a notify one person block, where this is a notify all block. So anybody carrying the technician's label would be notified. Eventually, after 15 minutes, we can escalate it to the on-call person. How do you choose these blocks? Over here on the right side, we have all these blocks you can change. Notify all, notify. We also have decision blocks for based on a label, as I'm showing you, severity, uh, time delay, time of day you can make a decision based on. For these items, if you're not sure what to use, you can click the question mark at the top. This will bring you a page that looks like this, and will give you more information on configuring your blocks and your advanced tactics. With that callout, we need to have a pointer from a strategy. Strategy, create new, engineers. We can click the advanced license. Now we have more options for the advanced tactic. As we define in our configuration, we chose to have the initial event happen and start the tactic called engineers. The stop condition for the alarm will be when the alarm is terminal. This will stop the callout list of people. We also wanted to re-notify every 45 minutes if nobody is acknowledging this alarm. Upon repeating timer, 45 minutes. Since we're using the mobile app, any uh, state change you can re-notify on. You can turn this feature on and off. With the mobile, it's a nice feature to have because as alarm is acknowledged or active or inactive, you'll see the box change from green to red or check boxes or triangles appear so, so the user knows the status of that alarm. Since we're using mobile, I'll keep this alarm state change on. And there it is. There's our advanced strategy, engineers. This will point to our engineers' advanced tactic. Now let's go through a real-world scenario. We're back on the advanced tactic we configured, and we had this on call. Let's investigate that. If we're under contact, as you can see here for my voice, I have my connections. My current connection defined for the on-call role is Frank. I also have a technician named Ryan. Right now, it's Frank's weekend to be on call. What if the next weekend I would like to configure Ryan to be on call? All you have to do, you edit your contact, Ryan, for the phone. Now Ryan is on call. We save this. We edit Frank. 
and we take Frank off of on call. So Ryan is now our on call representative. Let's go over and check out that tactic. Now as this tactic comes in, this weekend it'll contact your technicians, but these items take into account your time of day, your schedules. So Ryan and, and Frank are on different schedules. Frank is on a 7 to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. Ryan is on a 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Friday. So as this comes in, this will check the technicians and if it's the weekend, for example, this won't notify any technician because it's taking into account their, their schedule. You can also edit this and allow it to ignore your schedules. But right now, this block is taking into account our schedules. So as this comes in on the weekend, this block would be ignored and it'd wait 15 minutes for the call out. And then it would escalate to our on-call phone. Now, as I just showed you, Ryan is our new on-call. So that's a perfect example of how you can turn your on-call on and off and change your user credentials around. Okay, let's recap our configuration. We made a tactic called engineers, and we made a decision based on a safety label. If this had the safety label, we could contact our engineer with mobile, wait 15 minutes, do a retry, and then contact our manager. If it did not have a safety label for this alarm, we just contacted our technician, wait 15 minutes, and contact the on-call. I also showed you how to configure that on-call role on and off for different users. We also created an advanced strategy or a policy of actions to put in place, which is our starting, stopping, and re-notifying. This strategy named engineers pointed to a tactic named engineers or a call-out list of people. The last step in the process is to define your alarms and point the alarms to a strategy which will point to a tactic. There are six videos available for the how-to video section. They're short 10-minute videos. They talk about each SCADA type, including OPC and how you can bring your alarms into Win 911. That's all for advanced tactics and strategies. Thank you for watching.